But let's let's go over the lineup again. You have Sabrina D'Angelo, Lucien Proulx, and Kaylin Sheridan. Same goalkeepers. The defenders, where it gets interesting. Kadisha Buchanan, Gabby Carl, Sydney Collins returning from the She Believes Cup in camp. Vanessa Gilles, Ashley Lawrence, Jade Rose coming back from injury. Jade Riviere, Bianca St. George's more than likely replacing... Alicia Chapman, who has been excused from her team um, for this. We hope all is well with her. Uh, hope a mental break or something that <coughs> or something of that nature. But hoping all is well with her. But that back line, that's then in midfield. Marie Yasminaledu makes the squad. Uh, Sophie Schmidt is retired. Uh, when will we celebrate her? When will we send her off? We don't know. But Sophie Schmidt is retired, meaning she won't be called up. Not even just to say thank you. I do wonder when we, again, will have that service. <laughs> when we'll have that ceremony to truly say thank you for all that she's contributed to this program over the years. But Simia Wujo, Jesse Fleming, Julia Grosso, and Quinn Five midfielders again only. Now, again, a little bit of a technicality there. But then you have your attackers, Jordan Heidema, who's still in good form, playing for a while. Rain, Koloe Lacasse, who, along with Sabrina Angelo, missed out on uh, Champions League play. You have Adrian Liano, who is looking for play. And I, we'll have a conversation about her. Michelle Prince, who's been getting into form. Deanne Rose just signed for Leicester City. Leicester City, Leicester. I I said it wrong to someone. I'm sorry. Christine Sinclair, Olivia Smith back again, and Evelyn Vienne off of her move to Roma. <clears throat> now you look at this roster again, as I always do. We always have the conversation, which is, what do we glean from this? With the amount of attackers that are there, and more importantly, the amount of defenders. If you look at the defenders, right, or the center backs, pure center backs, you have. Zdorsky, you have Rose, you have Gilles. You have Collins, technically, who can play there, but just going for pure center backs, you have your big three. You have a Bianca St. George's who replaces, again, Alicia Chapman. Abby Carl can switch in between. Sydney Collins could also play a little bit in between. And then you have your two fullbacks in Ashley Lawrence, who's playing on the right side at Chelsea. And then... Jade Riviere at Manchester United. With that many people, I don't know what this might mean. But it does make me think with the amount, and especially playing Jamaica, if we've learned anything from Jamaica at the World Cup is they will be solid defensively. They were very impressive. They were, I know they only scored one goal and made it to the round of 16 Losing to Colombia there, but they were solid defensively. And with the amount of center backs there, I know I posted on Twitter, maybe it's a 4 1 4 1. The more I, th I look at this, may we see, might we see a flashing of a back three, a true back three? Not having Quinn sit between um, Buchanan and Gilles, but a true back three. Of either Rose, Buchanan, and Gilles, or Zdorsky. And I think the idea of having a back three makes sense to me simply because instead of having the fullbacks push up, one of the things that got exploited at the Women's World Cup for Canada was whenever the fullbacks had to bomb up, you left a lot of space at, and you saw pieces of this against Ireland. But then ultimately, Australia ate that space up and really caused and punished Canada off for it. So one way to kind of play against that, but also play to the strength of your fullbacks, is to push them up the pitch. Instead of having Ashley Lawrence and Jade Riviera having to start the build-up from so deep, why not get them in a more of an attacking role? And since you are playing Jamaica, who will most likely sit back and try to find areas and pockets to attack a back three may leave you in a little bit more of a solid defensive stretch than say 
a back four with your fullbacks bombing forward where you're essentially playing a 2-4-4. Four, four. Or whatever, a 2 yeah, a 2 4 three, one, essentially. And that would leave you very much exposed. Now, if you do that, so you play a back three or effectively a back five, the question now becomes, what do you do in the midfield? And I think this is where the conversation always gets tricky. Because Fleming and Grosso, though Fleming can play deeper in the pitch, everyone wants to see her on the ball a little bit further up the pitch. I do tend to agree with that. And Grosso is 8 to 10 range. She isn't a 6. That's not playing to her strength at all. But then what do you do with Quinn? I still maintain that I think the best usage of a midfield would be a 4-2-3-1 with Grosso and Fleming as your holdings, because at least there you can use them to move up and down the pitch. But in a 4-3, in a 3-4-3, I do wonder what the midfield combination could be. The simple answer would be Quinn and Fleming. And if you need more attacking, you can put on Grosso for Quinn. Or you can sit back or just go full on attacking. And if you need to close out the game, you bring in a Quinn. And that way, they can be a little bit more solidly defensively. But still play in that full, that range of midfielders where they can sit back as a CDM, be a solid CM, but then also break some lines to get the balls to the to the AM. Where does a, a Marie Esminale do fit in that? Marie, though she can play all levels of the midfield, I still think an 8-10 to 10 is her best role. Which, again, when you look at this, that means you really only have one CDM. Now, I always thought if before the injury happened to J.D. Rose that she could be that emergency CDM, which is why I still think, it's why I still think a, a back three could work because then you could push J.D. Rose into the midfield. And we saw her runs in the friendlies against Australia. She is that probing midfielder. We've seen Kadisha do it. We've seen... Vanessa Gilles to different extents do it, but Jade is that type of CDM who, if there's no passes, she will start to carry and drive and make the defense have to react to her versus sitting back and then letting the defense dictate where the ball can go. She can dictate a little bit or manipulate the defense with her driving of the ball and carrying of it. So it does make it a little bit more interesting there. I do wonder now, when you get to the attacking, if you're going to go with a 3-4-3, who is your attacking trio? And this is where it gets a little bit tricky for me. Because Adrian Leon has not played. The only player who you can argue is in good form is Jordan Heidema. Just based off her starting at the end of the So if she's your nine, what players do you play that will truly complement her skill set and play with and off of that. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky for me. Because who are the wingers that you really do trust in this scenario? Who's in form? We've seen the shell get a little bit more action. Deanne just got put there, but didn't look like she was fully ready at the World Cup. And we don't want to run into a situation where you have to now play players just in the front three just for the creativity because you, you need players that really complement what you're trying to do. And that, that's ultimately the fear because ultimately, right, if you play, because, I mean, the Ireland games, again, that stands out to me from a, okay, what happens here? Because the Ireland game, you had Vienne, Heidema, and Lyon, who are essentially three shoot-first type players, which really is... Difficult, really move thing. If it's if it's my call, <clears throat> as much as a player like Chloe Lacaz does play a nine, I think she's proven to be the most playmaking of the forwards in form right now. And putting her on the wing now, maybe 
her spot. We've seen Bev use her as that third to fourth, like that 60th minute sub, just a you are tired legs and let's get some more pace running at you. But I think you can afford to put Chloe Lacasse in on one of the sides and just give that the threat of pace. Sometimes the threat of pace is more than pace itself. And I think that allows a player like Heidemann, though she you know can be on the ball and her playmaking from deep is improving. There's no doubt about that. But I think playing her at her strength is getting her into that 18-yard box and trying to create some combination opportunities from either outside the box into in or seeing if she get her foot or head on the on the on the end of any type of crosses, either just through balls coming through or just some aerial balls coming towards her. So I think if it's me, I'm definitely going Chloe Lacasse and Jordan Heidema. And then the question is who do you play on the other wing? Cause history says it's gonna be Adrienne Leon because that's who Bev trusts. And for whatever reason, she is able to produce in the Canada shirt. Just no one ever wants a player in their club shirt in the last couple of years. So based off of that, I would go Heidema up top with Lacasse and Leon flanking her. But I'm not against Prince going there. But if you go Prince there, then the conversation becomes, can, do you have enough pace? Or does Bev, more importantly, trust the player like Olivia Smith to create a little bit more and to become that dynamic sub. Because I think she can be in this type of an environment. But this is this is the big leagues now, right? We've seen her dominate, have spells where she is the best player on the pitch at the CONCACAF U20 level. But now the conversation is, <clears throat> can she be a spark plug for the senior national team? Because she's not going to start right off the bat, Olivia Smith. But can she create coming off the bench and i think if she's able to do that that certainly does open up a realm of possibilities because you can put a player like olivia smith you could put her anywhere to be honest but i think right now her strength is in that midfield so either as an option but then the problem is if you look at her as an option in the midfield you already have simia Wuja, who i think in this type of a game can create because this is not going to be a type of game where it's going back and forth so much of how she played in those friendlies versus Australia. I think this game will tilt more towards a a battle of wills. Can who will be who will break first? Will Canada get frustrated because Jamaica has defended well? Or will Jamaica break due to the quality? I mean, Jamaica held Brazil scoreless. They held France scoreless. We know that what this team is capable of defensively because we just saw it. But can they create more opportunities? The one thing that also, can we create a few more opportunities outside the 18-yard box? Who are the players who can send some shots just to keep the defense a little bit honest? My suggestion at uh, for the Ireland game was Quinn. I think they'd be a good option for it. Um, we've seen them score some some a couple long-range goals at the NWSL. I think that would be a perfect role for them, especially if they're going to join the attack, have them moving up the pitch, and then offering those those long-distance 25, 30-yard shots just to keep the defense honest. And maybe in continue to do so, maybe one of those hits a post, rings a crossbar, then you have to start to respect that. And in doing so, now you start to open up the midfield from there, and I think that opens up the opportunities for them. And then between that, I think you have enough players that you can rotate well and be safe. You have enough players that you can really push. Now, looking at this on the Jamaican standpoint, the counter is going to be big for them. You know, we if you don't know about Bunny Shaw, you, where have you been? But, but I think, to me, the player that could co- pose the most problems for Canada is going to be Jody Brown. Um, Jody Brown is a player who I believe is still at Florida State. Yep. Jody Brown is still at Florida State playing. Played at Mount Verde Academy, and now this should be her last year. 
of college eligibility before for having to go pro but i think that player she's proven she has the pace and if if jamaica's gonna look at things that have eaten can in the past it's players who can get them on <laughs> katie mc katie mccabe um you saw player you saw shola do it you, you saw when nigeria was in the game against canada when the republic of ireland was in the game versus canada and when australia was dominating versus canada it was Getting the ball out wide on those counter opportunities. If there's one player who's going to do it, yes, we're not diminishing a Bunny Shaw, but I think the player that's going to cause the most, which is why I think a three four three is the option, or as I suggested, a four one four one, where you can then sit back. Quinn, they can sit back in that CDM role, and then you can put Grosso and Fleming in that midfield advancing. And then you put them with two wide players. And that's where I would put a Chloe Lacasse and a Adrian Leon with Heidem up top. <clears throat> Push from there. And then once you hit that 60th minute, that's where I think you put in a player like a Christine Sinclair. Uh, you put in a player like Evelyn Vienne. You, you toy with the idea of players like Deanne Rose, Nichelle Prince. I think that's where you do that because now you can use your depth a little bit better. You have players who are starting to move into a, a better position. And I think that's what makes it a lot more intriguing, a lot more interesting for them. I, I think right now Canada has the depth, but they may not have the the confidence right now. But I think a good showing in Jamaica will definitely keep them going and then finishing the job in Toronto on the 26th. How do I see this working out? I think... Canada gets it done um, on a overall score. I'm going to go with recent history with a home and home to qualify. I'm going to go Canada takes this 4-0. I think they get a 1-0 victory in Jamaica. And then at home, um, it's a little tense at times. But then they're able to get three more goals in Toronto and get it done. And then he went 4-0 on aggregate. That's how I see it going. <clears throat> maybe I'm wrong. I think Jamaica definitely has the quality to score one. So maybe I will go there. I'll give Jamaica one here and have on a aggregate them winning 4-1. Canada winning 4-1 on aggregate because Bunny Shaw is, is worth at least a goal. And we've never seen that matchup, like a, a fully fit Bunny Shaw versus... Canada's back line, their center backs of Kadisha Buchanan, as well as Vanessa Gilles. And if they played with the idea of a Jade Rose, we saw her being able to keep up pace wise with Sam Kerr. So that is definitely a possibility where we can see that going through. But my lineup would be Sheridan in goal, a back three of Buchanan, Rose, and Gilles with Rose being able to move up in the attack, but then also sit back in the back three proper. In the midfield, I would go as your wingbacks, Jade Riviere, as well as Ashley Lawrence. Midfield, I would go with, in the 3-4-3, three, three, I would go with Fleming, as well as Quinn. And then up top, I'd go Heidema as your nine along with Chloe Lacasse on one wing and Adrian Leon on the other wing. If we go a 4-1-4-1, Sheridan and goal still, you go a back four of Lawrence, Buchanan, Gilles, and Riviere. Then you put Quinn as that CDM on top of them. Then your midfield would be Grosso, Fleming, and then out wide you put Lacasse, as well as Leon, and then you have Heidema up top. Those would be my two ideal lineups, and I think this aggregate ends at 4-1 for Canada, with Canada going back to the Olympics and defending their gold. Do I think they get it done? We will have to wait to see, but that's how I see it running. <laughs>